So the first person I want to talk about is James Hemings. James Hemings is believed to have lived from 1796 to 1801. So that would bring his death at about 36 years of age. And James Hemings is someone that I wanted to discuss at the forefront um, just because of his place in history. He is one of the first celebrity chefs as we would know it today, you know, a chef that's, you know, prominent, well-known, cooking for celebrities and dignitaries and diplomats. So back in 1779, um, Jefferson was appointed the governor of Virginia, and that is where he was his head chef. And so for years and years, um, he worked for the Jefferson family along with his other siblings. Um, in 1784, uh, Jefferson was appointed the Minister of France and with that he was obviously going to bring his personal attendance with him to Paris. Um, with that being said, Hemings was one of those attendants that got to go with him with being his personal chef. And so Hemings was able to go to Paris and cook under some of the most renowned chefs, some of the best pastry chefs. Um, he worked in some of the best kitchens and eventually was the head chef of his very own restaurant. Hotel de Langec was the hotel where um, Hemings was actually the head chef. He was able to manage his own kitchen uh, very effectively after taking the time to learn the French language. Um, he did this by using parts of his salary to hire a tutor to learn the language. And so with learning the language, he was, again, able to gain the respect of fellow cooks. Uh, he was able to rub elbows with some of the most decorated chefs um, and was exposed to ideals of freedom. Um, with it being the French Revolution, he was able to meet free men. Um, and it was rumored that he could have even seeked legal freedom while being in France, but he didn't. He um, returned to the States uh, with Jefferson once he was finished um, with his stay at uh, Hotel de Langec, which is actually one of the first um, international embassies. So upon Hemings return back to the States, he continued to work for Jefferson. Um, that being said, he did eventually negotiate um, his freedom. Um, a stipulation of that freedom was that Jefferson wanted to be able to choose a new chef, a chef that Hemings would have to train up to his standards. And once that stipulation was met, he was a free man. Now, the man that Jefferson chose as his replacement would be Hemings' younger brother, Peter. Um, so after almost two years of training his younger brother how to take over his position as a head chef, um, Hemings, James Hemings, was granted freedom and he left uh, the Virginia plantation, Monticello. James Hemings was not a free man for very long. Um, it is believed that within five years of his um, emancipation that he actually committed suicide. Um, and it was believed that um, overconsumption may have been some of the causes um, that facilitated um, him taking his life. And I think it's important to talk about someone like James Hemings, um, not only in the stature that he was the first American trained in France um, in culinary arts. Um, he brought over a lot of European influences and dishes to America. So if you've ever enjoyed French fries or a creme brulee, which is my favorite dessert, um, European mac and cheese, um, these foods are attributed to Hemings learning these trades and learning these techniques and learning these dishes and bringing them back over to America and teaching these dishes to his fellow chefs and even his younger brother at that point who ended up replacing him as Jefferson's personal cook. I think it's important to bring the history of these people out into the forefront so that their contributions to the way that we enjoy food to this day um, can be recognized. So the next time you're crunching on a French fry or eating up a yummy creme brulee or enjoying a nice bowl of vanilla ice cream, think of James Hemings.